With Mother's Day around the corner, the subject of motherhood has come up at the forefront of my mind as if it hasn't come up at the forefront of my mind every day. For three years now, I my child is almost three. I get many questions about how to sustain feminine energy, a lightness in spirit. I mean, all these things that I talk about when you are literally downtrodden. What is a good word without making it seem dramatic? But when you are drowning in obligations of motherhood, domestic life, and what it means to run a home after you've got married. Uh, basically, what happens to Cinderella after she goes towards the castle with her prince? I think the biggest misconception that I need to squash is that femininity and being in the feminine is this soft life, luxurious, lean back, receive, have everything done for me. Because there is a difference between the roles of feminine energy and masculine energy and roles of womanhood and manhood. The simplest way to put it is women pay the biggest toll of reproduction. That is what makes a woman different from a man. However you swing that cat, that is the toll you're gonna to pay as a woman. You are going to pay a heavy duty tax on having children with your body, with everything you do. I cannot implore that to you more. You can make it airy, light and fluffy. And there is something to be said about that. The reason that people who are the same age, age at different speeds, and I guess this is the point of the video, is because of their cellular structure and the cells in their body shrink at a certain rate. So someone who's 35 looks completely different to another 35 year old, aside from Botox, let's just remove that and plastic surgery. And the reason for their different looks is their outlook on life. This is what research has shown. So a lot of times people will physically age faster after they've had young children because the amount of stress, also hard jobs, all these things will lead you to age faster within those few years things like the pandemic that just happened because of stress. How do people who maintain their youth and playfulness and feminine energy, how are they able to sustain it? And the, the biggest takeaway is they're able to sustain it by having a light outlook. They might have the same amount of stresses in their life. Jane and Jill might have the same amount of stresses, but the way they react to it and the way they see it is different. I am learning and it's hard for me to be in the moment with a child. I have never, been on the receiving end of a life lesson to this degree ever. I am a very cerebral person. I'm often in my head. I enjoy a conversation. That is the basis of my core personality. And having had a child, I am dedicated. I am present. I put my child first. But the amount of attention and calm connection you need is the big test for me. It's not the nappies. It's not the feeding and all these things and not sleeping that people talk about. Sure, that's hard, but you have some kind of capacity to understand the hardship of that because you've, you know, lived your life. You understand what it's like to wake up early and all those things. But it's very hard to be completely present with a small person. And I think what true feminine energy in the role of motherhood means is stepping into that role for five years from zero to five and even through pregnancy and having a level of acceptance that this is your journey and this is your task at present. This is your, you know, people say they, they self-realize at work or they write a book or they, they do something to, pardon me, or they do something to self-realize, right? But there is a role in womanhood and motherhood where you also self-realize through that role. There is so much room for expansion and growth that is, that, that, that you cannot even pay for. Talking of Mother's Day and women. My mum gave me this mug. That's supposed to be me. That's supposed to be my mum. Which brings me on to the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Majuri, an incredible jewelry brand, which has exactly what I've been searching for. I've been on the search for a single mini diamond floating necklace like this one since my mum was here in January. I wanted to gift it to her, I wanted one. I think it's the most elegant looking thing in the entire world, especially on the chain that it comes on. And with Mother's Day around the corner, I gifted myself these and I'm gonna give them to my mum and any woman who I think is just kicking ass because the price point of these is chef's kiss. When you're looking for a
solitary diamond to be hanging on your neck like an ethereal little beautiful piece, you're looking at, I don't know, 3,000 and up. And this one is solid gold, 14 carat. Furthermore, this small necklace I found in there as well with an M for Mama or Margarita in my case. I also got an L for Leo. I might wear an L and an M. Diamonds, beautiful. This brand has really taken my breath away. I'm gonna put some codes in the description box below. If I can get you guys a discount, I'll put it down there. It is the perfect Mother's Day gift, or even if you're watching this day after Mother's Day, it is the perfect gift for a woman in your life, or even for yourself if you have young children. Trust me, I've kind of fallen off the bandwagon of handbags that used to be my jam and clothes, and it is about jewelry because it's about taking that small moment to say, I am still a beautiful girl in here, despite me changing diapers and all this stuff, I am still adorning myself with beautiful pieces. And another piece I found, these bold huggies. Huggies are the thing for me, because you know why? Because when they're not studs, you can just sleep on them and not take them off, and that's what I need in my life. I also got a single diamond bracelet, because why not match them? I think this all looks so beautiful, effortless, elegant. I can take my son to school. I can go on a date if someone wants to take me. I can do all those things. I'll put the these specific jewelries in the description box below and check out their website. It's my new find. I really, really love it. High quality, stunning. Happy Mother's Day to anyone who's a mother. It's Mother's Day in Australia. Getting back to the subject, how to maintain being in your feminine energy when you approach the messy, chaotic, and untethered role of early motherhood. And the true essence is twofold. Number one, you must accept that sometimes the role of womanhood that is given upon you is hard, arduous, and must be walked through like the metaphoric fire in order to scold you into and mold you into the phoenix that you are gonna rise out to be. And you have an opportunity in this lifetime to do it because you were not born male, you were born a woman and you've decided to have children. So you've got this opportunity to become something other than what you were and you need to accept that it's gonna be hard but at the same time you need to accept that it's going to mold you into something completely different, a different being, a caterpillar that becomes a butterfly so on and so forth and a part of the gift of your biology is that you were able to do it and every hardship trust me there's a video on my channel here when i talk about uh, suffering with hyperemesis gravidarum which is not being able to eat or drink during pregnancy and pregnancy for me is a hard basket so i'm not coming from a place of oh just so lucky to you know be a mum but i'm coming from a place where if this is the role that you've chosen there is something to be learned in everything and this is by far one of the biggest and fastest acceleration courses in 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 life and this is what you've chosen so this is what we're going to do so it's not going to be easy but it's going to be incredible and the second part of it when it comes to the feminine energy part and not so much the womanhood and biology is that Feminine energy is not just about softness, receiving and reclining. Feminine energy is also about flow. And I cannot tell you how much I've had to learn about being in the flow, being in the moment, and being receptive that I've had to do from motherhood. Deploy the feminine energy parts of you that aren't about face masks and self-discovery, but that are about letting go, not planning, being in the moment, and if you are struggling with the fact that you've had to step down from your career, I'll address the people who have to work at the same time in a second, but if you've had to step down from your career and you feel like you're not self-actualizing and self-realizing because you're doing this and your task is not seen and it's thankless and that you wish that you could be rewarded monetarily like you are at work, understand that this is a system and they have tricked you to think that what you're doing isn't worth it when it's the most worthy thing in the entire world. You are doing a task that is irreplaceable. Think about how much you struggle in life with, oh, you know, my mom said this, or this didn't happen for me in my childhood, or your self-esteem, or something. It's not because of someone at work, it's because of your childhood. You have the opportunity to mold someone's childhood into something. 
incredible because you matter and this matters and it is a huge point of self-realization it's like when monks go off in the mountains and they come back different not exactly like that but you know what i mean it's a rite of passage and there needs to be some acceptance and flow to it so you might be tired and you might be crazy with your hair in a bun or whatever it is the stereotypes are which by the way you don't have to be you can be glorious and polished you can be anything you have energy for and want it to be but embrace it as something that is worth it and worthy and incredible and do not ever say to anyone i'm just a mum if you say that i will personally fly there and slap you because there is no such thing as just a mum nobody ever says i'm just an it consultant you're not just a mum you're a mum and it's a big job and it's an important one so my piece of advice that i want to give you is it might feel messy it might feel like chaos but you're going to come out a powerful being afterwards and you will have connected with your femininity in a way that you would not have been able to without this experience and for women who don't have children and don't wish to you can connect with this experience in other ways it's about nurture and connection and flow and being in the moment with something and there is ways to do that outside of children animals other people's children causes we women know what we get that energy from so it's up to you to find it to conclude on the women that have to work in the early days of their children being young and their family depending on it if there is a man in your life my belief is that he should take the financial responsibility even if you're not living in the most luxurious way in the first few years of a child because your job as a mother is way bigger than anything that else that you need to be contributing but that's just my belief if however you cannot do that because you are not with your partner then know that you can do an incredible job and that sometimes you will have to deploy masculine energy in order to get through this i was raised by a single mother she was raised by a single mother i am very versed in what it means you cannot be simply in your feminine energy as a single mum but there's nothing wrong with that masculine energy is my predominant energy as a person hence my i guess interest and obsession with feminine energy because i realized it was so deeply lacking but if you are a single mum then you need to find moments of both masculine energy and feminine energy and flow it's not going to be easy but it's going to be worth it and you need to not cut off the possibility of future incredible human beings and men coming in your life because the only person you'll be punishing is yourself and letting your ex who it didn't work out with win you are incredible and by the way the idea that you are less worth something with children is ludicrous to me i think because i come from a culture where everyone had children i had children in my 30s but everyone had kids 19 20 21 when i was born all my mom's friends had kids at that age and as we know marriages don't always work out with people around that age when they get married very young university they break up so i knew a lot of single mums with children i grew up there wasn't a cult around mumsy motherhood motherhood was integrated with sensuality sexuality as weird as that sounds of me saying that but as in the woman was not separated from her beingness of a woman and motherhood so it was never ingrained in my mind that by becoming other you are now detached from your sexuality and sensuality because it's just not what i saw everyone had a child in their 20s when i was a child growing up i was six years old all my mom's friends were 26 years old let's just say as a rough bracket and all of them either were married or dating other people and they were or just glamazon like women who were both sensual and mothers so that was never separated for me in the western culture it's more like girlhood then you fall off and then you put a mum bun in and mum jeans and then you go off to be a mum and it's kind of comforting to do that i guess a part of me wants to say because uh, it's kind of nice to wear a mum bun and not care. Do not divorce from your feminine power, your femininity, your seductive nature. You still have all that even though you're a mum and you're single. You have it in hordes. And trust me, men want you. They will want you. Just never approach life from a position of begging someone or being apologetic. And the biggest piece of advice is do not be apologetic for having children. Your child is like your limb. 
you cannot apologize for your arm. You need someone in your life as steadfast and respectful that will respect those children and trust me if you do not care men do not care and it's the type of man you find sure if it's a man looking for his first marriage and to have children with a wife outside of college great that's not the man for you but there are many men who've been for, through their own marriages and <clears throat> are looking for something else my point being is feminine energy and motherhood is about being in the flow being strong being present knowing that you're going through a journey finding your sensuality and sexuality again. And if you are a woman who is married, it's about being happy and not good. Just delegate carelessly, quickly, and ruthlessly, because you are not gonna win by working yourself to the bone and into the ground. That's not gonna make your family happy. The center of your family is you, and you power them with your energy and your happiness and how you show up in this world. So when something happens and you are tired and you're overworking again, and then you're biting his head off and you're ripping his head off because you are overworked and overtired, come back and say, I would rather be happy than good. I don't need to be a good wife. In these young years, I would rather be happy. Take all the breaks you need. Just indulge in this slow life not soft life, be present, learn what your child is, and it's not easy work, but it's so worth it. I'll see you on the next one. Love you lots like Jelly Tots. Bye.